there was no Gaza Strip. The Gaza, the Strip, the Strip itself is an Israeli invention. Gaza was a cosmopolitical town on the Via Maris, the road from Alexandria up to Alexandretta in Turkey. And because it was the main road on the sea, many people from different countries and cultures passed through uh, Gaza and uh, uh, left an impact that turned it into one of the most cosmopolitical towns uh, before 1948. It also had a very uh, uh, good system of uh, a coexistence between Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Just recently, a friend of ours found an interesting uh, declaration in 1905 by uh, the three heads of the religions in the city of Gaza uh, uh, expressing their delight in 1905 and how well are the three uh, communities deal with issues of friction, disagreement, and uh, uh, conflict. Israel created the Gaza Strip because Unlike other places into which it could push the many Palestinians it expelled during the Nakba, during the 1948 catastrophe, unlike other countries such as Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan, that were willing to receive the hundreds of thousands of Palestinians that Israel expelled, Egypt closed its border. Egypt refused to accept even one Palestinian. And because of that, the leader of Israel, the great architect of the ethnic cleansing of 1948, David Ben-Gurion, who ashamedly has a, a, a boulevard named after him in Paris, is a war criminal. And he decided that Israel is willing to give 2% of historical Palestine in order to turn it into the biggest refugee camp in the world. And that's how the Gaza Strip was created, by the Israelis as a kind of rectangle, a structure, a geometric kind of structure, into which Israel pushed the Palestinians from the central of Palestine and from the south that Egypt did not, was unwilling to accept. The last group of Palestinians who were pushed into the Gaza Strip were those living in 11 villages on whose ruins, on the ruins of these villages, Israel built the settlements that were attacked on the 7th of October by the Hamas. So the Hamas attacked settlements built on the ruins of the last villages of Palestine that were destroyed by the Israeli army and expelled to Gaza. In the Israeli archive, we have a very uh, known document called Order Number 40. Order Number 40 is from the 25th of November 1948, and it was sent by the Israeli Central Command to the commander in the area of Gaza. And it has the name of the 11 villages. And the order says, and I quote literally what the order says, occupy the village, expel all the people to Gaza, burn the houses, and demolish the stone houses. Because some of the houses of the Palestinian villages in 1948 were built of, hot, of, of uh, uh, mortar and, uh, and straw. And therefore, it was possible to burn them, but the stone houses had to be blown up by the Israeli army. So one historical context we have here is a generation of grand grandfathers and grandmothers, fathers and mothers, grandchildren that live either directly or indirectly the Nakba of 1948 in a very vivid way on a daily basis, not only because they are thinking about Jaffa, or they are thinking about Beersheba, or any other place from which they were expelled, but also by watching 
the Israeli settlements on the other side of the fence from which most of their uh, parents and grandparents came from. And uh, Rania mentioned the, the uh, March of Return in 2018. This was exactly one of the uh, uh, objective of the March of Return to remind the world that the settlement on the other side of the fence, the ones who would be attacked on the 7th of October, were Palestinian villages destroyed through the ethnic cleansing of 1948.